Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use a rhinestone hotfix applicator which I've got here that came in this bag from AliExpress and this was less than £8 including delivery. They do have these also on Amazon but on Amazon you're going to pay around £10 more for it but obviously the postage is a little bit quicker with Amazon. I will pop the links in the description below so you can check them out. And I went for the full set, which came in this bag. And in the bag, you get obviously your rhinestone hotfix applicator. You get the little operation instructions here. They are written in Chinese, but also in English as well. You get a couple of little trays, handy trays. This one has got the little open at the bottom, which makes it easier to pour it back into the bag. And this triangular shape one also makes it easy to pour the gems back into the bag. But also the shape of this one, you're supposed to be able to pour the gems inside, just a few, and shake it. And that flips them all up the right way. That doesn't do all of them, to be fair, but that does work on a few of them. So that is handy to have as well. You also get some tweezers, all of the different heads for the different size rhinestones. And this also came with 12 colours of 3mm rhinestones with the hot fix glue on the back. As you can see, if you look closely, you can see the rhinestone and the dark side is the hot glue which melts with this tool. And I also bought a couple of bags of extra gemstones because I will be using a lot of clear ones. So I bought the size SS12, which is around 3.2 to 3.7 millimeters I believe and I also bought the SS16 which are the four millimeter gemstones. You also get these wax pencils. These aren't normal everyday white pencils. They are actually a waxy finish and these pick up the gemstones. Now a normal white pencil would not do this. Only these particular rhinestone picking pencils will do that. And you get two of those. One is blunter than the other. You can sharpen them obviously with normal pencil sharpener, blunt them as you like. The sharper they are, the better for the smaller rhinestones and the blunter they are, the better for the larger rhinestones. You also get this brush and this is for the rhinestone stencils. I don't know if you've ever seen a rhinestone stencil before. It's basically a pattern and the holes are cut out where the rhinestones need to be, which you use like a stencil. And what you do is you shake over your rhinestones and then you brush them over the stencil with this brush and that will magically make the rhinestones fit in each of the holes. That is quite clever. I've seen that done online, but I haven't actually tried it myself. So you also get that included as well in this set. So I'm just going to set these aside. I'm going to have this wax pencil to one side just in case I need to pick up a rhinestone. And we're going to use the SS12 rhinestones, which are just over three millimeters. And I'm going to pop these in my tray. Now I've actually popped quite a few in there, so that might not work, but just to show you, as you can see, a lot of these are glue side up. And when you shake this tray, that helps to turn most of them, or it should do, the correct way. So as you can see, there's now still a few glue side up, but a majority of them are now the correct way ready to pick up and attach to our bow. We need to pick up our three millimeter tip. It says on here, three millimeter or 10 SS. Now these were 12 SS rhinestones, but you don't have a 12 SS tip included. So we're just going to be using the one that says three millimeter, or you can just go through your tips if you don't know the code or the actual measurement of the gemstone. Just pick up your tips and place them over the gem just to see which one best fits. Now, as you can see, this tip is not picking these gemstones up. Sometimes they will. Sometimes you'll be able to place this over, give it a little twist and that will pick them up. But this isn't. But what we're going to do is we're going to attach this to our gun and heat it up. And then you can see that will then pick them up. Now, this part is important. 
do not plug in or turn on your hot fix rhinestone tool until after you have attached your tip because this gets hot very quickly and you don't want to be touching near this tip when that is switched on. So taking your tip with this switched off, you can then screw your chosen tip into the end like that. Make sure it's nice and tight, not terribly tight, but tight enough so that it's not going to come off. And obviously being from China, this did have a Chinese plug on it, but I just simply bought a converter plug and plugged it in that way. So now it's fine. It works here in the UK. So I'm going to now switch this on. And as you can see, we've got this little light here to show that that is on. And I'm just going to set that on my metal stand. This also came in the bag with it as well, this little metal stand here because you don't want to stand on a surface because you may melt your surface. So always use the little stand and be very careful not to touch this end when that is on, because like I say, that does heat up so quickly and that gets so very hot. Whilst this is heating up, I've got some masking tape here. Why have you got masking tape, you ask? Now you can get thimbles or like the rubber finger protectors from Amazon or AliExpress but I don't have one. So I just use mask and tape, that works for me. And what I do is I wrap my finger, I'm doing my left hand because I'm right-handed and I'll be using my right hand to hold my applicator tool. So on my left hand, I wrap my finger with mask and tape. and that will just help protect my finger from getting burnt when I'm applying my gemstones to my bow. So this is the bow I'm going to bling up today. So we're just going to leave this for a couple of minutes more to heat up and then I'll show you how this works. Mm. So as you can see, I've started placing some of the gems onto my bow and to pick the gems up, I just simply give the tray a little shake make sure that there's a gem that I want to pick up away from all the others. I don't want too close together because you'll find that another one will stick on the side as well. And sometimes when you go to pick these up, they don't grab into the end. So I have to sort of scoop it up to the side and then bring it up. But I've been using it a while now. So there is naturally a little bit of glue residue on the tip of this. So that does pick them up a little bit easier now. But that is a little tip for you. If it doesn't pick it up, pop your tip onto the drill or the gem and just sort of drag it up the side and scoop it out. That is how I do it. Or you could try using your pencil and placing it in, but this will melt as soon as that touch this end. So that is quite tricky to do that. Or you can use your tongs, which again, that is quite tricky. So wherever you can, you are best to try and pick up your drill using the tip of your tool. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So you want to hold your tool straight up, directly straight up, not at an angle, straight down. And then you want to place the tip over the gem, give it a little twist and a wiggle. Now, as you can see, that is not picking that up. Sometimes that happens, some that will pick up easily, another time that won't. So I'm just going to scoop Scoop up the side like that and then is that going to focus? As you can see, you can watch the glue at the end and you can start to see it go clear as it melts. So just keep an eye on that glue. You don't want it to bubble. Sometimes that starts to bubble quite quickly once it's been used a little while, but around six seconds, that's enough for that glue to start going clear. Pop your finger under the loop of the bow where you want that gem to sit. Pop it in place, hold it for around eight to 10 seconds. And then I'll just give it a little wiggle to make sure that feel like a stuck, which that is. I'm giving it a wiggle and that's not moving. And that gem is now melted on there. Now don't touch that gem because that will still be very hot. You want that to cool down. And then it's when it's cooled that the, the glue is set. So that is how you apply the gems to the bow. I'm just placing these on randomly around my loops. 
So the next one I want to place about here. So I'm just going to take my finger out of that loop. So I'm going to pick my tray up and give it a bit of a shake just to separate those gems. And then I'm going to go for this one here. Nope, that's flipped upside down. So I'll go for this one, scoop it up the side. Watch the end of that glue for when it starts to go clear. That usually takes around sort of six to seven seconds. And then I'm going to place that on my bow where I want it. to go for one towards the bottom this time. Pop it on the top, pull that one picked up easily, look. So again, waiting for that glue to start to turn clear. Place it on my bow, holding that in place. didn't take long at all. Now doing it this way by putting the gem in the tip and then leaving the glue to melt before you pop it onto your bow that then gives the ribbon less chance of burning whereas if I was to use the gem picker tool I will just show you how to do it that way as well. So you can use your wax pencil you will pick up your bow So I'm going to put this one about here in the middle. I'm going to use my wax picker tool to pick up my gem, place it on the bow where I want it. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to cut there because I had a phone call come in. And when I went back to edit the video, I realized I'd missed a whole part that hadn't recorded properly. So I'm just going back in from where we left off. So I picked up my rhinestone using the wax pencil, placed it onto my bow where I wanted it, and then you will hold your tip of your tool over the gem. And this way you will have to hold it here for longer because obviously you've got to melt that glue right from scratch rather than melt, letting it melt in the tip first. So that is another way you could do it. But by doing it that way, you then risk burning your ribbon where the ends slightly touch the ribbon you may burn it around the edges slightly because that's in contact with the fabric for longer so that is why I like to pick up my gem using my tool and then place it onto the bow that way after the glue has melted and there you have your finished rhinestone hair bow there are a couple of more tips that I want to tell you before I go so when you're adding your gemstones you want to make sure that none of the wand touch another part of your bow. So for example, on this ready-made bow, it's got quite a lot of creases in it. So if I was say applying a gem at this angle, you want to make sure that this part is not touching any of this ribbon here, because this metal part here will just ruin the ribbon, that will just melt it. Also, if you're doing a piece around the side and the tails are sort of touching it, that will melt the ribbon. So at all times, make sure that is only this tip on the rhinestone touching the bow and nothing else. Another tip is, as you can see, these have a little gap in them. So if you're trying to attach a rhinestone to your bow and you can't get the rhinestone out, just take a pin or the tweezers that come with it and just run it down that gap and then you'll be able to pop the rhinestone out the end 
by using this little gap here. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful on how to use the rhinestone hotfix applicator. If you've got any questions, you can pop them into the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching everyone. Bye bye.